Hey guys, it's Edward. So today, I have another leak code style problem for you. In this case, what I'm going to do is a pretty familiar problem that you may have seen in my guide. Now, I'll break this video up into two parts. The first part will just be your typical leak code style solution, where I'll go through the steps it takes in order to go from a naive or no solution to an optimal one. In the second video, I'll go over a solution that one of my clients sent to me that is completely wrong, along with the attempts and timestamps. I'll go over how I evaluate mistakes of an incorrect solution, how I learn from them, and my whole thought process of analyzing bad solutions. So with that, let's begin. So today we're going to serialize and deserialize a nary tree. Now again, you might have seen this in my doc, but I'm going to formally go over the steps and processes that I use in order to try and analyze and solve this problem. So first, let's actually tackle each one of these components separately because trying to do them all at once is going to be very difficult. After all, if I know how to serialize from a tree to a whatever structure, then I know how to go back and forth. So in this particular case, what I'm really trying to do is go from essentially this tree structure that I may have and then convert to string. This is the serialization. And then going back from string to serialize is going to be the deserialized portion. Now, how do we exactly go about solving this? Well, the first thing I want to do is make sure I fully understand the question. Well, when I say n every tree, that means that these trees can have multiple n number of children. So that clears it up. So I'll be dealing with a standard typical recursion in tree problem. Uh, the next part will be, okay, well, and I need to make sure that I can convert this to the right format. In some cases, the interviewer might ask for like some weird binary format, and this is not uncommon when you're dealing with maybe thrift or protobuf, but in this case, let's assume that the interviewer is reasonable and wants us to convert to a string. All right, so far so good. So let's actually run through an example and see if we can come up with some way of representing a tree structure. So never mind whether, let's ignore the serialization part for now. Let's just focus on serializing it. So my first thing would just be if I had A, B, C, D, E, and F, right? Um, and so how would I want to represent this? Uh, so in order for me to represent the entire tree, I would need to traverse it in some way in order to visit every single node and get the value. Now, traversing it can be done in two ways, breadth first search or depth first search. Now I could do it. Now, if I was to try to represent this as um, breadth first search, then what would happen is just be, it would be A, B, C, D, E, F, you know, but the problem is that when I get to these later levels, you know, if I had a dangling tree. Uh, dangling child g i would not be able to tell which um child g belonged to it could have if i try to go and deserialize it then i don't know which how to pair these up f could even be paired back up to c as well so this doesn't really tell me much um i could try blocking it off and then just do something like this where every single gap represents oh hey um this would represent the group of children that belongs to this node. So for instance, if I have A, then I have to hop over one in order to get the, its children, B, C, D. B would have to hop over one, C would have to hop over two elements, and then D would have to hop over three elements. So already this is like, okay, we at least have something that can work and I just need to delimit it. However, there are a few issues. Well, for one is that I need to make sure I have some commas in between because um, I don't know if these are going to be characters or strings. So let's say in theory that each of the values inside the nodes are going to be strings just for the sake of argument. Well, that's fine. And so I will need to have a delimiter in order to separate the levels and then a delimiter to separate the group of children and the uh, strings themselves. So this can get very, very, um, I would say hairy in a hurry. It's just it's, it's a little bit difficult. I mean, it, it's straightforward in the sense of I know what the algorithm is going to be. It's going to be a little bit hard in the sense that I need to have all these extra spaces and extra lines that represent like no children. What if the tree is very sparse? This is not very efficient. So I'll just have like slash slash just to represent uh, empty children. So that is the drawback to doing a breadth first search. So let's actually explore what a depth first search might look like. So let's say I do a depth first search, right? It would just be A and then B, C, D, E, F. But the thing is that I need to know how I want to traverse this. So when I look at this tree, my first instinct is really to represent this as a binary tree using the LVR um, in order post order traversals. However, we're dealing with an n -ary tree where there can be any number of children. So what does this mean? This means that we either visit the node and then the children 
or we can visit the children and then the node as well. So I'm more in favor of doing this just because it's a little bit easier. You are able to make an easier association with the current node and then the children node. Um, and it just seems like it's a little bit more straightforward to manage. So let's actually see what uh, visit and then visiting the children looks like. So if I visit A, then I'm going to do uh, B, C, D in this chunk, right? Um, but then inside the B, that's also going to be its own traversal. So then what B would look like would just be look like B, E, F. All right, so far so good. I will use commas to delimit the, um, what's it called? The children, like we said before. However, what ends up happening is that, well, I need to know how these all fit together because let's say i did the final merge you know um and i combined these two together and got the proper traversal what this would end up looking like it would be look like a b e f c d and again we run into the same problem of trying to separate out the children from all the rest of the nodes oh we don't know whether or not in this arrangement uh how all how these are associated so what we really want to do is make sure that we have a and then notify that hey these are going to be a's children and then within that you have this situation with b and then you want to do this exact same thing b has e and f as his exact children so this is actually going to be pretty straightforward you know we visit the node and then we open the parentheses and close the parentheses if there is a children to be had then we fill it out otherwise we don't and we just keep going on this is a little bit more efficient than the previous Thing that I suggested simply because you don't have all this extra parentheses just because you don't have extra children. Had we done it the other way, we would end up having like something like C parentheses and then comma, then D co uh, parentheses, comma, you know. Um, and this becomes very, very um, inefficient because we'd be using extra space. So this looks good so far. So if I had to write this out in terms of actual like pre uh, pseudocode, what I would do is write traverse through the tree. You know um and then for every single for the node visit and record which means output it and then um output a and then if um you know if there are children are children open parenthesis and then traverse and i'll just say dfs for now and then close the parenthesis um, and then we're gonna do a plus equal to represent that, hey, this DFS is going to spit out some strings. So let's actually try and walk through this design, see if this actually works. So let's start with our good old stack trace. And this is gonna be very, very useful for you if you are doing any kind of recursion problem. So I'm gonna start with A. So my stack trace is the node A, right? Uh, I'm gonna record and visit it. So my, no my string right now is gonna be consist of A. Now, if there are children, I'm going to append a open brackets there are children so i'm going to look at and then i'm going to go to dfs so i'm going to look at b dfs per child and then i'm going to look at b right so let's use this to re represent that hey i'm going into the recursion with b and so now when i visit the node i'm going to record b and then if there are children i'm going to open parenthesis and then visit each one all right cool now i'm going to visit e so open parenthesis visit e E, record, back to the top, record, no children. Great. Now I'm going to go back, pop out of my stack. I'm done with E now. Now I need to, now I'm back at B where I'm looking at uh, whatever that uh, next child is. So that's going to be F. But wait a minute. We said earlier that we need these commas in order to separate the children, right? So after these two, for every single child, so after that we do a plus DFS in here, we're going to do a plus comma. So then here, now that I've done the DFS, uh, I'm going to do a comma here and then go into the next one. Now, because of the way I've written this, this is a little sloppy uh, and this is kind of my fault. So let's actually clarify where we close the parentheses here. Let's, be, make a, let's make this a little bit more atomic. Let's close the parentheses once I'm done with this block. I'm going to draw this line to represent, hey, I'm going to iterate through this. If there are children, I'm going to open a DFS per child, add whatever the result is, and then add a comma after that. So. Now that I've clarified this, let's pick up where we left off. We were back at B and we finished up with E, right? And then we added this comma. Back here, we're gonna iterate through the child again. Our next child is F. F, now we're gonna do an open parenthesis. Now again, we run to the exact same issue um, that this is not entirely correct. So this open parenthesis needs to actually be put out here. If there are children, we're gonna do an open parenthesis 
and then for each for each child and then a four child we'll make this our its own block as well that way we know that to tell the loop to just go back up here so this is gonna be a little bit messy and i'll clean this up later but hopefully you can begin to see how i try to correct myself as i walk through the example so let's for the sake of sanity let's say i picked up an e if there are children open parenthesis uh for every single child e do add it together comma next and then the next child go back up here f right um and then f i'm gonna go into the stack trace it's gonna suffer the same fate as e did so we're gonna visit the node um and there's no children in f so then we return back the um we record f record f and then um and then we close the and then we're popped out here we pop out this and then we close the parenthesis um and so here this is where we start wanting to be a little bit more atomic about what we return back dfs per child do we want to just record a master string or do we want to record um the result now we can do this in either way right now i'm going to have it record a master global string however what you should be able to do is understand how to actually do this on the fly or in this case how to actually do this without the global um variable so i've done i'm done finishing looking up at these children right um so each one of these children we open the princess we close the princess um and then this princess is here this is here great now we're going to visit the next one we're going to pop out of b right and then we're going to go on to c c if there are children in c there are no children in c so then we're going to go c loop again add a comma after b and have a comma after c you know and then pop it to d d has no children we uh open the we uh don't open or close the princess boom we pop out of d now back here at a we had entered all the children b c d right so we're at this loop now after the loop is over we close the parenthesis so this is basically we compare the answers here and we get exactly what we expect so this idea works granted it's a little bit messy and we'll have to be a little bit more careful when we go to record it um but hopefully you understand how to actually do this so let's actually look at the deserialize function and this is actually a little bit um i would say a lot more straightforward than people make it out to be so let's actually start off with our string representation so i have a b e comma f comma c comma d right um and so firstly we're going to just iterate through the string and then just kind of use that as a set of instructions on what to do so in other words uh let's actually look at the string at the first character a so if i have a a if i have a character or letter let's say then i'm going to append it to my string the reason why is because you know i might have double a here you know um, I might have a bunch of other strings that this could be a part of. So in other words, I can't necessarily say for certain that I, this is the uh, word that's going to be in my node. So I'm going to just append to a string and then keep moving on. It's only when we reach these little special characters that we actually have something to um, to do. So once I hit this open parenthesis, that means that I'm going to start looking at double A's uh, children, right? Um, and so if I encounter a open princess then i am going to actually commit this onto the stack commit the str to the stack as a node um this is so that way we can maintain a record of what we were doing before because again when we were iterating through the dfs it was basically like a stack of recursion you know as a function call stack and we're just essentially simulating the exact same things here because once i'm done with all this chunk i need to be able to attach it back to a so either I can do a recursive call or I can do a stack. And personally, I kind of prefer the stack a little bit better because we are essentially doing iteration. Combining iteration or lengthy iteration with recursive calls is a big recipe for disaster, at least based on my own experiences. But you know, you guys might have a different opinion. So let's actually continue through the problem. So once I commit this, I'm gonna append the stack as a new node. Then I'm gonna read the letter again, right? So I move over here, I see I have B. So I'm gonna append this to my string. I see that this open parenthesis is here, I'm gonna append B. Now, I can already see a problem forming um, because if I push something to the stack, how do I reassociate it um, back to the parent? Um, right now, that's like that's a question floating around my head, but let's deal with the immediate problems. You can choose to address this problem now, um, but personally for me, I just kinda wanna play it out to see what other issues I have, but uh, moving on. So I see an open parenthesis, boom. Um, now I'm gonna have an, I'm gonna have move over and I have an E, right? 
um, I append that letter to a string and I have a comma, right? And so what I'm gonna do with a comma, I am going to uh, say, hey, right now, this is a child of B. So I'm gonna append, append this node str as a child to top of stack. So whatever's at the top of the stack, we know that this must necessarily be the child. So we're gonna attach it, move on, and then read a comma, read a letter. Now I have F, right? Okay, so now I have the letter F to deal with. I have the letter here, and then now I need to figure out what to do on a close parenthesis. On a close parenthesis, what I need to do is I need to append to the top of stack, and then I need to be able to pop this in order to say, hey, I'm done reading all of B's children. So now we have a problem because, uh, you know, once I pop this off the stack, I need to retain this as a reference. Um, but we can also see here, if we look ahead a little bit, that this comma says that we want to append this node as a child to the top of the stack. So this association will be taken care of for us. So which means that once I pop off the stack, I need to retain, retain the node as my current candidate or in lieu of whatever is um, being appended to in the string. So once I have that, then uh, I have this variable reference, right, with B. And so now the top of the stack is here. I read the comma. Now we have this association. Great, brilliant. Now we've solved our actual problem. Let's finish this up and then let's actually see how to write this. So C is the letter, right? C is gonna append to string. Or, and then with a comma, we are going to commit whatever our node is here, right? Um, and so with a comma, we're gonna have this C here, right? And then moving on, now we're gonna have D. D is the letter, append to string. Um, and then we're gonna ha have a close parenthesis. Now close parenthesis means append to the top of the stack. So D is gonna be here, pop the top of the stack and retain the node. And that means that we need to um, return this double A. Okay, so this looks like it actually works so far. Let's actually try and translate this to code. So I'm gonna put the code up on the screen here. And so you can see here how we were able to transform our own ideas, our own design in order to make the actual code. You can see it's, it's not actually that difficult. It's just actually a lot of moving pieces that you need to be careful of. And I think the real trick to doing this problem is just kind of testing the waters, um, seeing how many of the instructions that you've actually committed or you haven't. I've seen variations of this problem that try to do like open parentheses, closed parentheses everywhere. But notice that most of my strategy here has been around simplifying whatever I need to actually do and handle things on a case by case basis, in, especially in the case of deserialization. In the case of deserialization, I acknowledge what the shortcomings were. And then I said, hey, this is exactly what's gonna happen in each one of these cases. And this is why I prefer iteration over recursion, just because recursion definitely breaks the prob complex problems down into more uh, manageable pieces. But combining lengthy iteration and recursion is almost always a recipe for disaster in my own personal case, at least from what I've, I've seen. So, and you guys have come up with a different solution for this, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Also, I'll be doing a follow-up video where I'll look at other solutions given by my clients to this problem and then we will grade them and evaluate them as if we made the mistakes ourselves. We're gonna learn how to actually learn from our own mistakes and other people's mistakes and so on. So stick around for that. So that'll do for me. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Also, feel free to follow me on my socials where you can vote for what topic I cover next. And if you wanna try and secure the next job offer, you can book me for interview coaching at eChantech.com. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.